Okay, welcome to another iPad painting tutorial. On today's tutorial, I'm gonna really help you understand how to paint some dramatic skies and a sunset and some really nice warm colors. I know that when I include a sky in certain of my other landscape tutorials, people sometimes struggle. So hopefully this focus on the actual sky more than anything else will actually help people understand how to integrate that a little bit better in other tutorials that I do. As usual, I'm using an A4 canvas within the app Procreate on the iPad. I've got some pre-selected colors here. There'll be a link in the description of this video that will take you to my Patreon page and the file will be downloadable there for free. If you'd rather put them in manually, then within the value section of the colors, you're in the colors, go to the value section. Each of the colors has a hexadecimal code. They are all down in the description as well. Put them in there, press enter, color will appear up here, and then you can just start to piece together your own palette anyway. In terms of the brushes, I'm gonna be using one brush today, and that is the soft brush within airbrushing. If I go too fast during this tutorial, press pause, catch up, then continue. And if you need to backtrack a little bit, then don't worry about that too. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do on my canvas, I'm gonna to go to my layers. So on layer one, I'm going to my colors. I'm going to choose the second color on my bottom row. And if I go to the color disc, you'll see the colors and it is within the blue. Well, it's a blue green color actually, but it's a very grayed out version of it. And I'm just gonna grab that color and drag it into my canvas and it floods, fills that canvas. Create a new layer. So on this second layer, I'm going to go to my colors and I'm going to pick this second color along. And it's a really nice saturated deep orange red color, but it is quite a darkened version of that. It's not a grayed out version, but it is a darker version of that color. So on the brush size, we're gonna put it at around 25% and we're gonna have the opacity at around 50%. And I'm just going to have a few sweeps of this at the bottom section up to about halfway. Then I'm going to go to my adjustments. I'm going to my Gaussian blur. I want to affect the whole layer. And I'm going to slide it all the way across to 100%. Like that. I'm going to create another layer. And I'm going to go back to my colors. And I'm going to use this darkest color to begin with. Now it isn't quite solid black. We do have a solid black but it is still pretty dark. And with this color, I'm going to have a foreground bank of clouds. These are gonna be the ones that are really close to you, which is why we've got a really nice saturated dark color. So I'm gonna go obviously back to my brush, soft brush. It's all gonna be soft brush. And I'm gonna reduce it down quite significantly to around 4%. And in terms of the opacity, we'll have it at around 40%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in circular motion, start to build in some shapes. I want to put in the mass of this cloud. So I'm, I've determined it's gonna be a big shape here, and maybe sort of thinning out a little bit and then maybe a bigger shape over here. But I'm gonna keep it as circular motions to stop it. You don't really want any straight lines in this cloud. Sometimes as clouds get further in the distance, we have a flattening off at the bottom part of the clouds, but when they are nearer to us, you're gonna notice less of this flattening out at the bottom section. So I'm just doing it as a series of circular motions just to start to build it up initially. I'm doing it as lots of separate strokes. and it's gonna occupy this middle section, but I think it might have it slightly staggered. So this is the bit that's absolutely closest to us. So you decide the absolute shape of it. If it varies a little bit from what I'm showing you, then that really doesn't matter. It's gonna have its own personality. It's gonna be a little bit different than the one that I'm doing. And that's absolutely great. And that's the way it should be. And then I'm gonna have a bank of clouds over on this side. We're going to push them back a little bit further with techniques. But for now, I'm going to have it at the same kind of intensity. Okay, so once we've got the main shape, I'm going to reduce the size of the brush to the lower end of 3%. And now I'm going to start deciding on just some of the shapes that I think is going to look a little bit nicer. Now along the edge, some of those circular shapes are gonna look good but that's going to be a little bit too cartoony. So actually, some of those edges are going to be a little bit more fragmented, a little bit more just abstract, really. Now, this is the kind of thing that might take a little bit of practice just so it looks completely random. But the more you have a go at this type of texture and this type of shape, you will get better at it. 
but basically around this edge. You just want to sharpen the detail up a little bit, which is why we've reduced the size of the brush. And you can probably hear, I'm using lots of tapping motions with the Apple Pencil. Now, this isn't the only color that's gonna be along here because we're going to use really bright colors where the sun that's gonna be behind these clouds, obviously, is gonna really pick up and highlight the edge of some of these shapes that we're making anyway. So this isn't the absolute edge of these, but if we create something that we quite like, even at this stage, or is in more interesting, then the chances of it looking better later on have increased. So find some sections to create interesting forms. You're gonna have bits that start to stick out, other bits where you get less, and then other bits where you might get another section sticking out. I mean, what you probably don't want to do is have some strange shapes suddenly sticking out like that. It's gonna look a little bit strange. So you can have bits growing out of it, but maybe after it gets to a certain point, maybe it fragments and, and then you get a broken piece that's floating away. So let's go along this bottom edge. There might be some slight flattening out, even on this one that's really close to us. It's not gonna be as dramatic as the ones in the distance, this flattening, but you might get a little bit of that. Let's have some more shapes breaking off up here, perhaps. There's no right and wrong shapes with clouds, I suppose, other than you can look at something and it's, you might be stretching the believability. You might look at it and think, then it really doesn't look like it could be a real cloud shape. So if you end it up with anything with straight lines, obviously that's a no. If you get anything that just looks like it wouldn't hold its mass, so for example, you could have something like this suddenly growing out there now, and it again, it doesn't look quite natural. So I'm creating some areas perhaps where we have some fragmented pieces. We can come back to this and we can use the eraser. In fact, let's put the eraser on the same brush setting as we're using for adding information. Let's just say you'd been using this different eraser on a different painting, and now you're using this brush within this painting to get them to be the both the same, so they, they work well when you're trying to keep the same kinds of texture. Press and hold the eraser, and then when you do tap into it, you'll notice it's, it's matched the two things together. So now you can just get in there and just start nibbling away at some of these edges and just breaking it up a little bit. It's gonna give that soft focus, soft brush look that you've been adding information with, so it's gonna match up. So the eraser tool can be just as important as applying information. So I'm just going around with the eraser tool now and just starting to define some of these edges, making them look more interesting. If I think that, you know, sometimes some bits look a little bit dull, give it some character, bring out some of the gaps, make them look more interesting. But we can come back and do more of this later as well, like I say. So go back to our layers. I'm gonna add another layer, but we're going to put it underneath the layer that we've just been working on. And then I'm gonna go back to my colors. I'm gonna to go to this third color along now. I'm gonna go back to my brush. I'm gonna put it up to around 10%. I'm gonna put the opacity quite low. I'm gonna put the opacity at around 10% too. And then above in this top section, we're just going to bring in some more of this warm color. Now it's gonna be lighter up here because this is where the sun is going to be having more of an impact. So we're bringing this sunshine color, this white warm color up a little bit further. Now I'm just going to fill in this section over here. We're on quite a lower opacity, so you can go over it a few times, but I'm just going to block in this section. I'm gonna go back to my colors and I'm gonna to go to this fourth color, which is a really strong yellow. So if I'm going to use this, I'm gonna to have to put it on a really low opacity. So I'm putting it down to about 3%. And I'm just going to go back in and I'm gonna make a decision as to where the sun is going to be, where that area is. So I'm just going over a few times. Now I'm pressing on lightly and I'm just building up the yellow color in that area. We'll come back to that, but I'm gonna create another layer and I'm gonna put it on top this time. I'm gonna go back to my colors, and I'm gonna go for the next color along, which is a slightly more pastel version of that yellow, really. It's heading more towards the lemon, but it is also it has also got more white in it. So I'm gonna keep it on a low opacity, but I'm gonna reduce the size of that brush. 
to around 2%. And then I'm going to start going along the edge of my cloud. And in fact, let's turn the opacity up a little bit. So we'll put that a bit more generously up to about 10%. And I'm just going to start going along some of the edge of my cloud. Now, thinking about where the light source is going to be coming from, which is roughly in this area, we haven't quite put the brightest color in yet, but we're going to start showing some of the effects. So we know that we're going to get highlights along the edge of any of the nearby clouds, anything that's near to that sun area. It's really going to bounce some of that light back. So we can just go around and really pick out the edges that are going to pick up the light. In fact, let's turn the size of that brush down to the lower end of 2%. And let's continue with that. You're getting a bit more accuracy. We can really sharpen up the edges of these clouds now, give it some definition. Again, think about your edges. You don't want these to be flat. These are points of interest. This is where your eye is going to be focused in. So spend some time getting these edges looking interesting. I'm not zooming in. I rarely do during these tutorials. I'm after the, the overall effect for you to help you get to that stage. But this is definitely something you might want to zoom in a little for. So I'm just going to turn the opacity up to 15% just to make this even more impactful. And we're just going around some of these edges still. Now, as much as we are going around the edges, it doesn't mean, therefore, that you have to keep a thin line that goes around it. Sometimes the edges fragment off into blobs and shapes that break away as well. I'm just going to go back to my colours. I'm going to swap and change between some of my colours. So I'm going to go to this orange colour, this third one in. And as we get further away from that light point, we're going to increase the amount of orange in instead, really. So we'll probably use a combination of those colours. So we can bring some of that warm orange in a little here, and we'll have more of the orange over here, but we might take just a hint of that yellow with it as well. So it's often that the effect is about mixing colours together. It's not always really just picking one colour for one area. It might be use one of the colours and extend that across your canvas, and that's a better effect. So you can see I've just added some orange, and then we'll go back to our yellow colours. So we don't want the brightest yellow, we'll go for this one again and we're still on the 15% opacity. So I'll just press lightly and I'll start to bring some of this yellow chasing the orange into this area. Again, you can have broken sections as well as dark blobs drifting away. You're gonna have perhaps thinner sections of, of cloud that aren't dense enough to give a shadow or a dark appearance, but they are floating off and they do catch the light. So you can have all sorts of floating little sections, debris, bits and pieces that are just fragmenting away. Let's really start to bring in some more shapes perhaps that go across this area. I'm going to increase the size of my brush a little bit, the top end of 2%. There's quite a big difference between the lower end of 2% and the top end of 2% with this brush. Sometimes you really don't want to use 3% and you don't want to use 1%. And there's enough variation within that 2% size to fulfill all the requirements that you need from it. So I'm allowing this to become a little bit denser in places. This is something you can build up gradually until you've got a bit closer to the look and the effect that you think looks nice. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the layer that was underneath and this had our background warm colours and using this same yellow colour. I'm going to increase the size of the brush to 10%, but I'm going to put it really low opacity now to 5%. I'm going to go to where I think the sun roughly is, and we're behind, make sure we're on that layer, and then we can start adding this in. And we won't need to worry because we know it's not going to interfere with that dark layer. If we feel like it's getting too bleached out, we can go to this slightly more saturated, warmer yellow and have that impacting as well. We can start to extend it further across over here. I'm gonna go back to my colors. I think we need slightly more of this orange. So I'm building it up with combinations of colors. 
So bringing some of this orange into this section too. And perhaps bring it up into this upper area. Okay, I'm gonna go to the brightest of my colors now. So I'm moving along almost at the brightest. I'm at the next one. Check we're still on the layer. So we're still on layer four that had all those background colors. And I'm gonna reduce the size of the brush to 4%. We're still on really low opacity, so we're on 5%. And I'm just going to place the brightest, or we'll begin to place some of this brightness underneath. Now, for a later stage, we want to have that layer having more of an impact. We can go to the adjustments. We can go to the bloom setting, affect the whole layer, and we can turn it up and you can see it will make it more dramatic. But we're not quite at that stage yet, so we're not going to do that yet. I'm just building up some of this brighter color into the background, just helping the general sense that there's a lot of light coming from there. Now, I'm gonna go back up to this layer that had the darkest color on it, and I'm gonna go back to my colors, but I'm going to use this color, so it's the darkest color within the warm colors, and I'm going to reduce the size of my brush to 2% and I'm going to turn the opacity up to 10% and I'm going to go along this edge and we can start to bring inward some of the warm influence of that colour. Now it's not going to go over the top of the bright yellow colour so we don't need to worry about it doing that because it won't, it's underneath but you can quite happily go along that edge knowing it's not going to interfere with that yellow colour. In fact let's turn the opacity up a little bit knowing that it's not going to be a problem so we'll put it up to about 20% let's go along that edge and it's just going to soften it a little bit add some of these warm colors it's going to start to improve the overall look a little bit it's a gradual process something like this it's a minimal impact what i've just done but it it still can be quite important to the overall look i'm going to just go over this area i think this needs softening in a little bit we'll probably do that more effectively with another layer afterwards so now we're on this layer, I'm going to go to my third colour along, which is that orange colour. Turn the size of the brush to the lower end of 2%. We'll keep it at the 20% or thereabouts. And I'm just going to use this orange to start picking out some of the edges of the clouds that are a little bit lower down. So the light, the sunlight is obviously behind all of the clouds, but it's not here. It's not actually located there. It's located millions of miles away. So. It's going to impact all of the edges. It impacts here most, but you can't just ignore the other edges. It will have an impact on those and it will create highlights along those edges too. And we need to perhaps add some anywhere where it's darkened off as well. I mean, if you're gonna add it around here, you'll probably find that the background is lighter than the color we're adding. So if that's the case, you need to go to a lighter color to add to that area. So we'll go to this yellow color. I'll just show you again. In fact, we'll go to that more yellowy version and we'll just ever so slightly lighten it up along those edges. You don't want to go too much though. In fact, I'm probably going to subdue most of this with an orange color. But to begin with, we're going to just bring out some of the highlights. And then we've got highlights around this cloud that's sticking out as well. So spending quite a long while just going around the edges of these clouds. Okay, so I'm going to create another layer. I'm going to put it on top of all my other layers. I'm going to go to my colours. I'm going to go to this third colour in again. I'm going to put the brush at around 5% and the opacity really low at around 5%. And I'm going to have this colour. Imagine there's the sun there and it's breaking through and we're going to get sunbeams that go and cut in front of this section of the cloud. And if we extend this round, all those beams are going to have to go in the direction of the sun. So they're all going to burst out in this direction, obviously. So this is almost like the vanishing point and all the beams twist and turn always to face that point. If they cross over a little bit, it doesn't matter too much because I can go to my Gaussian blur Affect the whole layer, blur it in, and you can see it's knocked this section back and it's brought this section forward. 
So I'm going to continue not always worrying about the beam. Sometimes it's just not going to be noticeable. But I'm going to knock all of this area back a little bit. I feel like it's all competing a little bit too much and I want this area to stand out more. So it's this section really where we, we get a distinct beam coming through. So maybe we should reduce the size of the bush to 3%. And we can create that solid edge where it cuts down at that point. And the rest of it is less important, but certainly at that point we need to have a clear sense that it's broken through as a beam. Perhaps we'll also do the same thing. So we can imagine it cutting through here and creating some beams that perhaps, so imagine perhaps it goes up to around in this area and then maybe it's creating some beams that just, you don't need to absolutely clearly define them, but just the general sense that it's cutting through here maybe it's cutting through here a little bit. We're on really low opacity. You don't need to clearly define them at all. If you find that you are too clearly defining them, you can always go to your Gaussian Blur, affect the whole layer, soften it in a little bit, and then go back in and define it as much as you feel is necessary, but don't go overboard. So I might go to a brighter color, in fact. In fact, let's go to this one, but I'm gonna to have to be extremely careful, so I'm gonna turn it down to 2% opacity and the top end of 2% size. So I'm just going to perhaps just sharpen up that edge and that's even too much. I'm gonna reduce that back. Just a couple of tiny, tiny gestures just to sharpen up the fact there might be some beams coming through there. And we're going to have to add some brighter colors here to really justify these beams, I think. Just a hint coming through here and there. In fact, Let's add some at the top, so we'll turn this up slightly to 3%. We're still on super low opacity, so we'll just add some of these at the top as well. So they'll get slightly wider as they go off. And I'm perhaps too clearly defining them a little bit at this point, but I'm going to use the Gaussian Blur. Perhaps we don't need to do the whole layer Gaussian Blur, because these sections are fine. So what I, I can do is I can just specify which bits I want to blur off and which bits I want to leave alone. So these are too defined, it's not a problem. I'll go to my adjustments, my Gaussian blur, and I'll use the pencil. Now it seems to be set at around 60%, we'll try that. But we'll turn the size of the brush up to around 10%, put the opacity up to about 40%. Let's see how that looks. And then we can just start to blur these sections in. So just the bits that are perhaps creating too much definition, we can blur those bits in instead of all of the layer. Go back to my layers, I'm going to create another layer. I'm going to go back to my colours. Now when I was adding these clouds, I was using this colour. So I'm going to use a slightly more subdued, not quite as black colour. I'm going to reduce the size of my brush to the top end of 2%. In fact, let's put this layer underneath that first cloud layer. So that's the cloud that we want to go underneath. So we'll create a new layer for underneath there. Go back to our colours. Go for the second colour in this time. And size of the brush is going to be top end of 2% and we'll probably need to turn it down a little bit. So we'll put it around 30% opacity. And I'll just start creating some more clouds here. So these are okay to be slightly more stretched out. And we'll do something over here as well. In fact, let's turn the opacity up a little bit. Just saves a bit of time. So we'll put it up to about 50%. Let's really bring some of these out a little bit more. Bring it across here. So because we created a new section of cloud, we're gonna to have to go around those with the highlighted edges, just the same as what we did before. Before I do that, I'm going to create another layer and I'm gonna put it underneath that one again. So we've got the, the dark layer clouds, then we've got the next layer clouds, and then we've got a layer underneath that and I'm going to move along to this third colour in. And we're going to do the same again. But perhaps these are slightly even more flattening out. So I'm going to go back into these layers now. I'm going to use this orange colour, the third one in. I'm not going to change the settings really, I think 2%. And let's try it with the 50%, let's see how we go. So we're on this background layer now. So we're just using the orange just to hesitantly start to add some highlights. 
definitely to the top edge of them. And it might get to a point where we have highlights starting to introduce, but we don't even see where the, the shadow of the cloud is anymore. That tends to be what happens is that the highlight is preserved, but the darker shadow of it is lost in the mix. And if you want, we can go back a layer to that layer of clouds as well. I don't really mind. Sometimes the highlights can just go on any layer. I'm being quite rough now, quite fast just to go around. I can always refine a little bit later. I feel like I'm going to add some tones just to knock sections back anyway, so I'm not worried too much. If they show through, then we'll refine them. Okay, I'm going to go back up my layers and I'm going to look at this layer and I think what might be useful is to put that on the very top and it's instantly brought out, brought forward some of those highlights and I think that's a better move. So we'll go back to that layer and we'll go back to our colours and I'm going to use this brightest colour now this time but I'm going to reduce it down to the lower end of 2% and I'm going to reduce it down to about 30% opacity and just like we were going around the highlights before, I'm going to continue that concept but I've decided here is where the brightest bit is going to be because this is where the sunbeams are coming from so we really need the cloud to be picking up the most light and we probably need to start adding the sun in there as well. But I'll just go around picking up the highlights of the clouds to begin with. And how about we turn the size of the brush to around 6%, turn the opacity down to about 10% and just go for that area where we think the sun is going to be. And it can just completely bleach out that area. And then what we can do is go to our adjustments, go to our bloom, let's use the pencil. We're on 50% bloom effect, we'll put it on 5% brush size and we'll turn the opacity up to around 30% and we'll just bring out the sun there. And if you feel like you're just getting carried away and you want to keep extending it outwards you can do and see what it looks like. I personally feel like that's going to be too much for my painting so I'm perhaps just being careful where I add it. So I'm going to add it on this upper section but I don't want to add it into that section there. I feel like it destroys the cloud sections that I'm creating so I'm going to concentrate that bloom effect just to where the sun is and now I can go back to my colours. I think I might use this yellow colour just to tap around this area to knock some of it back a little bit because we've got a really great effect there but it is adding a lot of white in so I'm just going to use this yellow just to subdue it slightly around the edges and pressing on very lightly though but I can go back in now I'm going to pick the absolute brightest color I'm going to reduce the size of the brush really quite small to 2% we're still on the 30% opacity again we're on this top layer now where all the highlights are and now we really have a strong sun highlight. In fact, let's turn the size of that brush down to the lower end of 2%. We really have a strong highlight of the sun. So now it's telling us that we need to have slightly stronger highlights around the edge of the cloud immediately next to it. So sometimes when you add an element like that in, it really dictates that you need more of highlights elsewhere as well. Go back a, a colour as we start to get slightly further away. And then we can go back another colour as we get even further away and so on. So I'm going to create another layer but this time I'm going to put it underneath the darkest clouds which was layer 3 and I'm going to go to my brightest orange colour. I'm going to put the size of the brush up to around 4% and the opacity quite low at around 10%. And I'm going to continue behind those dark clouds the concept of the, the sunbeams coming through. In fact, the opacity on that is too strong, so let's turn that down even more. We'll put it at around 5%. We'll continue those beams coming behind that bank of cloud. And just interrupting and interfering with the sections further back. I'm also going to consider using some of these dark colours now. So I'm going to go to, in fact, no, let's, let's use this darkest colour at the top. I'm going to stick with the layer that's behind the main dark clouds and it's got some of the, the brighter beams, but it's going to have some darker elements too. So I'm going to turn it up to, I'll put it at 5%, but I'm going to have 
a bit more of a strong impact, so about 20% opacity. And I'm just going to start adding some of this, shutting down some of the light in these areas here. In fact, let's really go for it with the opacity. We'll put it up a little bit further to about 40%. And I'm going to do the same thing over in this section. So this bottom area. You can always go back over it with the highlights. That isn't an issue. I just feel like if I shut down some of the light, then we can see the real impact that we have by adding more highlights and more beams poking through. So we just shut down some of that area. I think that looks more dramatic already. In fact, let's go to these muddier colors over here. So let's go for that second color in and let's add another bit of that at the bottom. Go back to this darker color and let's almost add like a foreground element of land that's coming forward, just like there's sky clouds nearer to us. We can also have some land that's creating a dark shape at the bottom as well. I'm going to go back to my top layer. I'm just moving around the canvas a little bit now. So I'm going to go into this color so it's third in from the right. I'm just looking at some of the sections up here. I feel like it needs some floating highlights and things like that. So I'm just going to reduce the size of the brush to around the top end of 2% and I'm going to have 20% opacity. I just think that I can gradually soften the edge where the beam breaks out. That could be a good thing we could do. Perhaps I should reduce the size or reduce the uh, opacity on that to really get a slightly smoother look. Just be careful. If you feel like it's becoming a bit clumsy, we can always go to our smudge tool, reduce the size of that, and just smudge it in a little bit. If it's not quite worked as a brush, we can go to some of these sections back with the brush again. Just bring some of these highlights out. We know squarely where the sun is going to be now, so we can bring soft beams coming out. And it can just sort of disappear. It can have seems to have a strong release point where it escapes, and then it can just fade away. And you can use the smudge tool to help that process of it fading away if you feel like it's you can see the ed edges of it perhaps you use that yellow color just to perhaps increase the size of the brush to three percent we could bring it a little bit down into these lower sections as long as we don't go crazy we don't make it too saturated it can have a nice impact down there perhaps that's really strong so let's let's turn it down ridiculously low to around two percent opacity and we can just do it more gradually than that what we do perhaps need to do is, is reduce the size of the brush to 2%, the lower end of 2%, and turn it up to 20%. And perhaps we could add, because we know there are strong highlights there, perhaps there needs to be some strong highlights in this area underneath as well, because it is still pretty located, still pretty close to that sun. Let's go back to our colours. We can use combinations of these two colours now to start picking out some of the edges in this lower section. It's all going to be about texture at this point. So we've got the general sense of it for the most part, but we're just using these highlights to bring out some of the details, some of the edges, flipping between that yellow and the orange. So still on that top layer, I'm going to use this orange now just to soften in areas around this dark cloud too. So I can bring some of this orange in just to slightly reduce that dark edge when it gets to the bright sunlight areas. So I'm creating a buffer now of this orange between the absolute darkest bit of the cloud and the lightest bit of the, the highlight, in some areas anyway. And we're going to have little sections in these cloud areas where you can see here just there's going to be a slight highlighting of an edge there but it's not going to be as strong as the main highlight but there's a, a section slightly further back that may just have some secondary highlights so you can use a combination of primary highlights and then perhaps slightly less impactful ones so you've got your main edges and then you've got second edges perhaps that are just a set back a little bit further I'm going to go back to the layer that had this, which is underneath the highlights, and it's got this diffused, and I'm going to increase the size of the brush, and I'm going to add more of that effect. So it's at around 5% now, size. 
We'll turn it down to around 10% opacity. And I really want to bring in more of this orange in this section. Over here as well. Maybe bring out some of those sunbeams a little bit more. Just going to go to my darker blue here, go back to my layer 2 and I think I'm just going to, with my brush, turned up quite high to around 10% and around 20% opacity, just bring in some of this darker tone in the background. I think I'd like to just darken off this section to create a little bit more drama as well, especially near the top corner. Back to my main top layer, I'm just going to refine, just some fine tuning at this point. So I'm going to turn the brush size down to the lower end of 2%. I'm going to keep it quite impactful at 20%, but I'm just going to carefully now start to use this just to pick out some of the, the high definition, some of the sharp edges that I really want to pick out. So I'm alternating between these brightest colors so I can go backwards and forwards between them. I want some sections of cloud, some wisp of cloud to be really Quite highlighted, I can use these bright colours for that. As I move further away, I'm going to move across my spectrum of yellows to a slightly more subdued version. Well, it's still a bright yellow, but it's just not quite as much white in it. I'm also going to use the orange just to pick up bits of details as and when I feel it's appropriate. So I could take a whole section like that and decide to knock that back and then bring this section forward a little bit because it stays darker. So just shifting areas with light and dark tone can really create a more of a sculptured shape with these clouds as well. You know, if you feel like you've done it too strong, you can always turn the opacity down a little bit and just build it up more gradually and just a slightly more subtle effect. But there's lots you can do with slight shifts of the tone. Last touch, I'm going to just use this yellow colour, increase the size of the brush, really quite big to around 16, 15%, something like that, let's put it at 15, just keep it a nice number, and we'll have it quite low opacity, it's around 5%. I'm just going to start diffusing some of this area, and I feel like it's the brightness just needs to be softened in a little bit from the sun into this sun area. I feel like we just need to blend that in a little bit more. Go over it a few times, I'm pressing lightly. So I'm using shading techniques, if I feel like it needs a little bit more, press on harder. If it needs a little bit less, I'll let go a bit. And I feel like that's just softened it in a little bit more. If I just show you what it was a second ago, and then go forwards, and I feel like that just improves the overall look at it. Okay, I'm going to leave that there at that point. I could continue to refine it for ages, to be honest. But in terms of the overall effect, I think we're getting in the right direction. If you do have a go and you want to share it with me, make sure to join my Facebook group. There's a link for that in the description, as well as my Instagram. You can tag me there. Hit the subscribe, and I'll see you back here another time. See you later.